Hello, my name is Volkata, and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. Today we're going to discuss how to build a working clock tower in Minecraft. And behind me is an example of a completed clock tower. But we're going to switch over to a test world and show you how the guts inside it are all put together. And to the magic of video transition, here we are in the test world. Now, the goal of this video is not to give you a clock to just clone, but rather to show you how to build your own custom clock in your own world. First, we're going to walk through the machine laid out on its side, so it's easier to see all the redstone that would otherwise be stacked up inside the clock. Now, I'm going to go fairly quickly through each of these components and explain their purpose while trying to give a clear view of all the blocks, redstone, and various bits needed to replicate the mechanism. So feel free to pause at any time. Also, know that there are multiple ways to accomplish some of these effects. So feel free to experiment with your own custom design. For example, I built this with the goal of minimizing the amount of pistons used to reduce the noise, but there are some mechanisms that use more pistons that might be able to compact it. So without further delay, let's walk through this mechanism. Now I've laid this out again, stretch it out pretty good and compact this a lot more. That tower that you saw at the beginning doesn't have this much space to work in. But I wanted to lay these out kind of side by side so you can see the same mechanisms that are being repeated. Now the things you're going to most need to understand are these mechanisms here, which is an XOR gate. What this mechanism does is that it will output a signal if one or, I, uh, one or the other side is powered but not if both sides are powered or if neither side is powered. So we will only accept one input and that is the only way in which it will send out a signal. Uh, this is important because we want the clock to only have one light on at a time and this allows us to control which light is on. Now for the next mechanism, and I'm going to go ahead and let the night roll because it'll leave everything turned off while we talk about it. The next mechanism is an AND gate. The purpose of the AND gate is that it will only give a signal if both sides are powered. So if only one side or neither side is powered, then it will not produce a signal. Next we have a T flip-flop. So once this receives a power, it will flip where the output is. And it will only give one output at a time. And then we have a rising side monostable circuit. The purpose to this mechanism is that when it receives a signal, it will only let a quick pulse through it even if the signal coming to it is continuous and this is very important so we'll put these all together and we'll describe what's going on what we want first is we want the first lamp to come on in the morning and this is going to be roughly power level of 5 to 10 off of a daylight sensor Now you can adjust this if you like and we'll show you how to do so. But this lamp is going to represent the bottom of the clock. So it's 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. And since we're only using four lamps, we're going to say 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. because the next lamp will be 9 a.m. And then the way back down coming from the 3 p.m. lamp, which will be on the right, will come down to 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. And again, you can adjust these ranges and we'll show you how to do that. The next light we're going to want to have come on is at 9 a.m. 
to 10 a.m. we're gonna have this light come on and then at the top of the lamp or the top of the top of the clock we're gonna have basically noon and so I've done power level 14 to 15 and back down to 14 because as noon passes the daylight sensor is gonna start powering down that's gonna give us 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and then on the way back down we're gonna have the 2 to 3 p.m. lamp on the right side now the tricky part here is that a daylight sensor is going to power this range twice throughout the day. One on the way up and then once on the way down. We don't want the 9 a.m. lamp to come back on on the way back down. So we need a way of determining if it's morning or if it's afternoon, even though the daylight sensor is giving out the same power. So let's go through the process. So in the morning, this daylight sensor is going to, well, both daylight sensors obviously are going to give off power. And we said that we want the power to start at 6 a.m., which is roughly power level 5. So what we've done is we have power leading into comparators. So comparators coming off of the daylight sensor can be restricted based on power coming into the side of them. So in brief, a comparator can receive a power signal from the side and in its default state, meaning we just placed the daylight sensor, we didn't right click on it, on its default state, it will not allow power to come through it until that power level meets or exceeds the power coming in from the side. So what we've done is we've used a item hopper here. Now the reason I've used an item hopper is because it has the fewest amount of slots in it. It makes it easier to assign a power signal with fewer items. So with a non-stackable item like a minecart, and then seven of an item that stacks to only 16, like ender pearls or like eggs, we end up with a power signal of five, which on the right side you can see it says power five. That means that this comparator will not power through until it receives at least power of five. So at five, it's going to power one side here, which will turn on that first lamp of this XOR gate. On the next side, we are powering to our next target, which is 11. And 11 is going to be our 9 a.m. lamp. So that's gonna do double duty. What's gonna happen is at nine, power's gonna bleed through this. It's going to go to both XOR gates. So once it hits this one, we're gonna see power from the power five and the power 11. And once it gets power on both sides, it's going to shut it off because the XR gate will not power through if it's receiving no signal or both signals. At the same time, it's going to signal it's going to power one side of this XR gate, which is going to go to both lamps because remember we said that we get the same power signal going up and coming down in the afternoon. So it's going to power both sides when it goes through here you see it comes up and down and over and through so we can't have it going straight to the lamp because again we don't want the lamp to be powered the 9 a.m. lamp to be powered at the afternoon and vice versa we don't want the afternoon lamp powered in the morning so we're going to run it through these AND gates the signal from the XOR gate will go to one side of both AND gates, but the power won't come through until it receives power from both sides. And that's where we come in with this T flip-flop. So in the morning, once this gets powered, it's gonna send a signal to this AND gate. It's gonna pop up over. It's gonna circle around to this rising monostable circuit and power this T flip-flop. The T flip-flop will switch over 
and it will exude a power to the other side of the AND gate. Both sides will now be powered and the light will come through. Then when we move on to around noon at power 14, and this is what we need for power 14, and again this is power 11, then this will bleed through allowing the power to come through powering the other side of the XOR gate shutting it off. Therefore that will shut off the 9 a.m. lamp and it will come over to the 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. lamp and it will light that up. Then finally we have a 15 strength signal so that we know exactly at noon. Yeah, and there goes the first light. And exactly at noon, this mechanism will go off, which will give us the noon chimes. So at 12 o'clock, this bell will start ringing to announce that it's noon. And once the power starts to wane throughout the day, this will become unpowered as we drop below 14, removing the power from this XOR gate, allowing it to power again, which will again power the T flip flop, switching it back over to this side and this AND gate, and then the light will go to here instead of here. So let's watch it all in action. So we're starting at morning. And you see this first light came on. We have a power signal of at least five coming through this. But since it's less than 11, it's not powering through here. The XOR gate is receiving one signal strength, allowing it to pass through to this light. So if we move on to just before 9 a.m., So you can see the light switch through and this piston popped up. So now that both sides of this XOR gate are powered, this light is out. And when we received one signal strength or one signal to this XOR gate, it popped around and the signal managed to jump through the monostable circuit, which gave us one quick pulse, switching the T flip flop to this side. And now both lamps have been powered, allowing it to come through. Now we move on to the around 11 o'clock hour. And we'll see it switch over. That lamp goes out. This one comes on. Now this is signal strength 14. It is powering both sides of this XOR gate, shutting off this whole mechanism. Now again, this is always going to be powering one side of the two AND gates, but since it's not receiving the other power, those are out. Now if we move on to noon, we see the magic. And we get the noontime bell. So what's happening here is we have sent a pulse through another rising monostable circuit which has flipped this T flip-flop over to here. Now when it was in its default state, it was powering this hopper here, and you're gonna see an item pass through it, there it goes. When the hopper is powered, it keeps that, that item from moving. Right now the item is circling, as you can see it completed. And when it was cycling, Every time it passed through here, oops, <laughs> it sent a signal to this to this dropper clock. So this dropper clock has the amount of times we want it to chime, and every time it's powered, it sends one of the items into this hopper. Now, when the let's do this again. When the T flip flop was switched over, 
it's supplying a power to this hopper, causing it to hold on to the items so that they don't drain back into this dropper. Now when the dropper runs out, it will lose this power signal, powering this torch, which will flip the T-flip-flop back. When the T-flip-flops back, it will power this again. There we go. And now it's holding this item, shutting off the cycle. And that's how we control how many times it chimes. If you make this loop shorter, it will chime more quickly. And finally, we are at the roughly one o'clock time. And if we power ahead to the afternoon, as you can see, the T-flip flop switch to this side. Now it's receiving signal on both sides of this AND gate so that we have the afternoon light on, the only one of the two. And then as the day sets, we will get towards the 6 p.m. hour, and this will power on. Now, this whole thing can be expanded to cover the nighttime shift as well if you want to do daylight sensors in their opposite mode, because you can click on them and turn them into nighttime mode. I built this for an SMP where people are sleeping all the time, and it would take up more space, obviously, to repeat this as a nighttime thing. We don't normally get a lot of nighttime on a multiplayer server because again people sleeping felt it was kind of unnecessary but that's it now there is unfortunately one game mechanic that can kind of mess with this which is bad weather <laughs> so daylight sensors are affected by bad weather and the clock will not be correct during storms i hope that this made sense and I hope it wasn't too long. <laughs> Thank you very much for visiting my channel and I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the mechanisms. Again, you would normally stack this on top of each other so that you can compact it into a tower. I just wanted to lay it out so you can more easily see what the mechanisms are doing. And thanks to the magic of transitions, here we are inside the clock. As you can see, when it is compacted, it's a lot harder to tell what's going on. I like to use wool to kind of differentiate my mechanisms. But this is kind of what you got to look forward to if you want to build this in a compacted space. Also, Remember to have a window to the sky for your sensors. So again, thank you very much. And let me know if you have any questions.